Greetings, Grace family around the world. I just wanted to take a few moments to um, stop and encourage you and let you know that we're often praying for you. Everyone connected to Grace, we pray for you on a regular basis. And we thank you for supporting the ministry, whether you're watching, tuning in, giving, sewing, tithing, we appreciate it. I do want to make mention that over the next couple of months, we've got some special things happening here at Grace. May is the month in which we designated to look at women in the Bible. It's going to be dedicated. I know there's a Women's History month that we celebrate, but we're going to be looking specifically at women in the Bible. So during the time that our online services are being broadcast, you're going to be getting messages that have been curated specifically to highlight, to accent, and to celebrate the presence of women in the Word, women in the Word of God. And um, the end of this month, we're going to be looking at the celebration of Pentecost. And that's going to be important because we're involving the women of Pentecost, the women of Pentecost. And then in the next month, you've probably guessed it, we're going to be looking at Men in the Word, which is the month of June. So May has Mother's Day, June has Father's Day. We're going to be looking at the women of God, the men of God. And this, of course, is coming on the heels of the messages regarding the family of God. So think for a moment about your role, your identity, your perspective on Women in the Word, and join us at 10 o'clock every Sunday um, online or at 1 o'clock in person here at Grace for the Nations Church, where we believe there is hope. God bless. Welcome. I am so excited to be here um, this month celebrating women in the word. Thank you for at, having me. Thank you at Grace <laughs> for the Nations Church. Yes. And it is my distinct pleasure to have here uh, my sister, yes. um, my sister from the same father. That's right, that's right. <laughs> from the same father. <laughs> exactly. Pastor Dala Edlin from Rochester, New York, from Faith church rochester so i'm so excited to have you um, sharing god's word um, with us this whole month we are celebrating women in the word and so i just wanted you to just come along and just share your heart as a woman of god as a woman in ministry um, to just share with us um, your thoughts and what god has given you and how you walk out your place in the kingdom because mm. so many times we hear women say i don't know what my place is i don't know what my right. purpose is right. i'm not sure where to start and we know that us as women biblically as far as here on the earth as far as what what god has placed us we mm. are people of influence and so i just want you to share with our listening audience um your take and what god has given you and maybe share with us even a woman of the bible that you either admire or that you may model your life after and then maybe to encourage someone to, as they're finding their place mm -hmm. in god so share with us tell us a little bit about yourself and then just share thank you well you know it's such an honor to be here and um you're such a beautiful person thank and you. every time we get together we have such a good time so okay, i'm excited are, to be we're here on. we can't giggle today today That's we right. got to be a little more we have to be serious <laughs> right okay, right all right we'll be serious <laughs> all right <laughs> but yeah we, we're from rochester new york and um I, you know, I agree with you. I think that when it comes to a kingdom mindset, it can be so different from what the world says yes. who we are as women and what, so what society says we are. And we truly have to be in the word to understand what God says about us, what God says. He says in the word that it's neither male or female. Right, we are right. all one in Christ Jesus, right. you know. And um, when it comes to, there's so many incredible, incredible women. And we were talking earlier about just our favorite women <laughs> right. in the Bible. There's so many of them, it was hard to pick, but I have been studying Ruth lately. And she's do a phenomenal, share. Do right? share, do share, do <laughs> share. She's a phenomenal character. And um, the fact that here is a woman in the lineage of Jesus, right? in the lineage of Jesus, yet she was a Moabitess. Right. You know, she was not even from the land of Israel. She was grafted in just like we're grafted right, in, you right. know, and um, a part of the family of God. And because of what she saw in her mother-in-law, she saw something in some other w woman right. and saw something that she wanted. Right. And it wasn't her Naomi, it was God. She saw God in Naomi and here Naomi was, and, and the whole story, we don't have time to go through it all, but it, it's, it starts out with tragedy. The whole story starts with tragedy and how they're heartbroken and how Naomi is and her, her, 
you know, she didn't just lose her husband, she lost her son. Can you right. imagine? She lost her entire family. She lost everybody she loved. And they went to Moab and her sons found two women to marry there, but yet then they died. And Naomi finally came to herself, I believe, because they left because there was a famine. You know, the, the grass isn't always greener on the it's other not. side. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And it's so true. And here she was uh, saying, it's time to go back home. And Ruth mm. said, I'm going where you're going to go. Right. Is, wouldn't you say that that is just, you know, the incredible thing about God? It is. He's reaching us wherever we're at. It is. I love that. When I was thinking of what you were saying as far as with Ruth and Naomi, yeah. the fact that, um, yes, Ruth has so many circumstances. There was so much that was affecting so her, so much she had to deal with. But yet in her circumstance, she did not allow that to be her destiny. Yes. And that's what I think that we can pull into today, that regardless to what's going right. on, we as women in the word, yes, we're going to have circumstances. Yes, we're going to have challenges. Yes, we're yes. going to have trials. Right. But that does not mean that is our destiny. You mentioned something that, I, and there's one thing, something that I abide by often. Mm. You hear um, the grass, like you said, the grass right. is not always greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I always like to add to that, not only is the grass not greener on the other side, but mm -hmm. the grass is greener where you water it. Amen. And so I think that's what Ruth did. She watered right. where she was. She, sure she grew did. where she was. And, and right. it was connecting with the God of Naomi, Naomi right. and not right. just necessarily yeah. Naomi. So I love that you sh you shared that. Yeah. And, uh, and it's my hope that there's some um, woman that's listening mm. and that she can think on the life of Ruth. That's and right. as far as what is her influence and to regard regardless of her circumstance, That's right. regardless of what's going on, regardless of, and sometimes our circumstances is, are, are based on some decisions and some choices that we've made. That's the truth. And even if we have contributed to the drama mm -hmm. that's in our life, mm -hmm. that still doesn't have to be our destiny. Right. God always right. has a way out for us. He always Amen. has a way for us to go through. There's not, people say there's, there's victory on the other side. There's victory in your circumstance and on the other side. And yes. so that's what I want to encourage um, yes. women in this day because there's so much going on in the world. There there's so much that we have to contend with. There's so many hats that we have to, you know, we have to wear. So many, but yes. we can do it in victory. We can do it in excellence. We can do it in love. That's and right. it's so important that this month, it is our prayer that, and I know you and I were talking earlier today right. that women will look in the word yes. to find that yes solace, to find that hope, to find that, um, that, that direction and that's the right. guidance. And, that's right. and the thing that's so interesting in reading um, the word that God even told us the reason he allowed um, these, these stories or allowed these circumstances mm -hmm. to be brought out in his words so that it can be for our examples. For our examples. We go through that's so right. much, but then we said, we don't know what to do. It's in the word. Look in the word That's of God right. and we'll find the answer. So yes. tell us a little more. What, what else did you find out about, about Ruth or uh, as you're as your studying? Yeah. How, and how would you encourage women today to not only just use Ruth's life, mm -hmm. but how would you encourage women um, in their own life to just be in God's word? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think another thing that struck me about the story, something that really stuck out to me, we... I, I was familiar with the fact that Naomi was hurting and Ruth was mm. hurting. They were both hurting, but there was something Naomi had in God. And mm. yet when she went back to her home, she said to the people there, don't call me Naomi. Didn't she say that? Mm -hmm. Naomi means pleasantness. She said, call me Mara, which means bitterness. Wow. And she's like, you know, I, I left full, but I came back empty and wow. now I'm bitter. But the interesting thing that I never realized before was nobody called her that after that. Wow. God didn't. Ruth didn't. Boaz didn't. The foreman that told Boaz about Naomi didn't. Like nobody. And it just struck me. So how, she was in her feelings is what it was. She, she was in her feelings. But, you know, she called herself something that God never said she was. Wow. And God disregarded it. He said, you know, that's not your name. So no, I will not call you that. And, and Ruth said the same thing, basically, because God, you know, I'm glad, and we were talking earlier, I'm glad that 
God does not call me by what I call myself. Right, right. He looks past that. Right. Just like he said to Peter, you know, I'm calling you Peter instead of Simon because on this right. rock I will build my church. You know, God has a name for you no matter what you're going through. That's why it is important to get in the word because it's in the word that you find out who you are. You know, you're not going to find out who you are from television, from Netflix. You're not right. going to find out who you are. You're going to find out who you are by looking in the word of God. And I am so glad. I, you know, Naomi had an incredibly beautiful ending and she brought up her own grandson. God gave her back life. And yet God is a God of redemption. He redeemed Ruth. He redeemed Naomi, yes. but he never, he let her be in her feelings, but he never called her by what she called oh, wow. herself. Don't measure yourself by who you That's think good. you are. Measure yourself by who God says you are in the word. That is good. That is so important. And when I think about us as women, yes. that, you know, oftentimes we are, it's a saying that, you know, you hear all the time, we're our own worst enemy. A right. lot of times we blame it on the devil. We blame it on others, but often it's the inner our inner man, our inner person, the the, yeah. the the talk that we have with ourselves, so the words true. that we have when we look in, in the mirror as opposed to making, you know, affirmations. And right. um, the being women in the word, it is so important that when you hear um, certain words of loser, mm -hmm. you hear certain words, you're not good enough, or you hear words that um, you'll never be anything. We have to combat that with we not do. just words in our mind, but we have to speak it out because those are words of death and the power right. that we have is in our own tongue, our according own tongue. to the word right. that That's life right. and death is in the power of the tongue. So right. we have to combat those things. And it's great to have our leaders speak over us. It's great to have other sisters in Christ, you mm -hmm. know, pray with us because iron does sharpen iron. Right. But there are some things that we are going to have to bring ourselves out of with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because my sister and my leaders, they're not in the bathroom when I'm looking at myself in the mirror, right. getting myself ready or myself. brushing my teeth by myself. And that's, that's right. the time that 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 the enemy and that's the time that sometimes our insecurities attack us is when we are mm. alone. Mm. And so if we are very intentional, intentional about looking in God's word and very intentional about looking at the examples of Ruth, like you mm -hmm. said, Ruth called herself bitter. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the words, that may be what, how we feel, but that's not who we are. That's right. And that's, that's when right. I think it's so important that we separate our feelings and our emotions from the reality and the truth right. of who we are. And so, and when we can do that as women, I know we will continue um, to walk in victory. Amen. So um, Amen. thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And thank you for um, just sharing who it is that God has called you to be as well as how we can influence you know women to be everything yes. that god has called them to be because we have an assignment yes we, we do. have an assignment we have so many um things that we're supposed to do here in the kingdom if, if mm -hmm. we look out at the world and we see what's going on it is going to take the women of god and the kingdom of god i mean in the beginning you know eve had her place as far as she may have turned the world upside down right. but we right. have the opportunity in christ to turn it back right side up yes, we do. and as the influence we have to know who we are in order to influence others in right. order to influence our children in order to influence on our job mm. and even to influence those of us that are married to influence our family and our husband that's People right. don't understand that submission to your husband or submission to leadership does not mean that you don't have a voice. Right. It doesn't mean that you don't move alongside to help mm -hmm. move the vision, um, the move vision along. We have influence, we do. and that's what Ruth was in the in the Bible. She had influence to right. um, just do what it is that God called her to do. And Absolutely. so I want to encourage women to use your influence in a positive way. Yes. As we're looking in the word, Ruth used her influence in a positive way. So she did. we have to sometimes decide as women, well, who are we going to be? When That's we right. look at the examples in the Bible, are we going to be a, a Ruth and Naomi? Or are we going to be a Deborah? Are mm -hmm. we going to be um, a Mary? Or um, there are other women in the Bible that weren't 
they were women of influence, but it wasn't possible. Right. It wasn't very positive. Yeah. You know, are we going to be the Delilah to a Samson? Right. You know, are we going to be a Jezebel to an Elijah? So there's so many, so many, so many parts that we can play in the world. Right. But the key is we have to make that decision we on do. who we're going to be That's in right. the word. And I just love how God has not only given us examples of who he wants us to be, right. but he allowed examples in the word of who we are not to be. That's and so so um, right. share a little bit of, uh, about a woman that is looking for her purpose, looking for who she is in God. What word would you have for her to encourage that journey? Yeah, I would say, you know, it's so important to allow time with the Holy Spirit yes. so that he can speak into your life. You know, we it's amazing how much we open up our hearts as women. We are emotional <laughs> beings, right? We just are emotional and we let our feelings be our feelings. But right. how many times, you know, do we open up our heart and allow people and things to influence us mm -hmm. when we need to be opening up our heart to the Holy right, Spirit? Right. When we open up our heart to the Holy Spirit, He can pour into and define who we are in God. You know, Jesus said, well, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. He's going to be your comforter. Yes. He's going to be your help, but He's also going to be your guide. Yes. And He's going to lead you into all truth. So, so many times if you hear those voices in your head, which we all do, what is truth? Right. What is that voice saying? And does it line up with the word of God? And the more I know about the word and the more I allow the Holy Spirit to lead me into all truth, the more I can define and, and discern what is truth and what is not. You know, so I can look at something and say, well, that's not the truth because right. that doesn't line up with the right. word of God. So I don't have to open my heart up to that. It's closed. <laughs> I, can, I can open my heart up to the Holy Spirit and let go of things that I need to let go of. Because I think, uh, you know, you, you ever watch that show Hoarders? And they yeah. have, you know, you know, you think like, whoa, how did they get to that point? But we can be emotional we hoarders. Can. We can. You know, we hoard everything that everybody ever said about right. it. Well, you know, in 1983, right. somebody said something. Right. And do you know what I mean? Absolutely. As women, we can hold on to stuff. And the problem with hoarders is the reason why they can't let go anymore is because they can't discern what's useful and what's not useful. Right. They, don't, they don't know what to let go of. You know, right. and you, they can't even walk through their house anymore. They don't realize that that's the trash and that's something to keep right. because they kept too many things. And so we can be so emotionally into our feelings that we don't know what to let go of anymore. Wow. It's the Holy Spirit that says, let go of that. That is not for you. Right. Keep that. That's my truth. If wow. that makes sense, you know? Well, that makes a total sense. I am... I am encouraged. I'm encouraged too, because actually I'm on a journey. I'm not necessarily a hoarder, mm -hmm, but I mm -hmm. am cleaning out my closet. And so oh, I do, too, I have to too. make that separation <laughs> yeah. on what to hold on to yeah. and what to let and go. And the thing about it is there are things that I'm holding on to. And in doing that, I may be missing out on something else that God wants to fill there. And that's mm. how I kind of look, you know, yeah, at, at, at organizing my closet to make sure that in cleaning out that I'm also making room. I'm making room yes, for, for something um, new. from something new. Right. But even in my life, I need to make room for what God wants to do. Oftentimes our, our lives are full yeah. or filled with so much stuff so that much. there is no room, you know, for God to do a new thing in us. And right. so that's what I right. want to encourage um, so all of our, our, our listening um, audience and all the, the ladies that are listening out there. Amen. Find out what it is that God has for you. And like Pastor Darla, you know, said, it's going to be in the word. Amen. So I want to encourage you to find on your on your journey That's to right. look in the word of God and to find who you are in God's word. So with our last, our time is winding up. So with our, the last bit of time that we have, if you could just give us some closing remarks and just say a prayer um, for the women um, so that our hearts can be open to, you know, hear God's voice for our life. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for our time together. I thank you, Lord, for just your spirit. You are so faithful, God. I pray right now, Lord, that as we delve into your word, even as women, Father, that you would show us what we need to see, God. Let us hold on to your 
truth, hold on to your faithfulness, hold on to who you are in our lives and show us what we need to let go of God. And Father, I thank you that you will lead us and guide us into the purpose that you have for us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining in. We encourage you to um, be a part of Grace for the Nations Church. We are um, in service every Sunday at 1 p.m. And so we want you to join us at Grace. And I, if you're in Rochester, head on over That's to right. Faith Church Faith where Church. Pastor Steve and Dollar Edlin are phenomenal leaders and they're just part of the kingdom. And so uh, it's just such an honor for you to Thank be here you. with us. And we know you'll come back yes. again. Yes. And so for our yes. listening audience, um, the doors of grace are open and know that here at Grace for the Nations Church, we believe there is hope. God bless. Thanks for tuning in to our online service. Maybe there was something that you heard today that really touched you or uh, moved your heart. It's always a good idea to seal that with prayer. Or maybe you've decided that it's time for you to give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you're saved. And that's it. It says that anybody that calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter um, what you think about yourself. God said it and so we should believe it. So I wanna pray for you so that you have the opportunity to um, experience the love and joy and peace that comes with having Christ in your heart. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us all the opportunity to um, accept you into our hearts and that you have made um, us free from our past, things that we've done that we're not proud of. Lord God, I thank you that we're able to um, confess with our mouths and to uh, believe in our hearts and, and you will accept us into your family. So God, I pray that uh, for that person out there who is interested in um, growing in their faith, Lord, I pray that they will repeat after me, Heavenly Father, um, I believe who you are. I believe that Jesus is Lord and I want him to enter into my heart. I believe of the sacrifice that was made on the cross on my behalf. And Lord, I just ask that you forgive me of my sins and that you welcome me into your family. Lord God, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Greetings. Thank you so much for joining us for our Grace Online. It is our prayer that you received everything that you wanted from the Lord today through the Word. And I want to invite you personally to come and visit us on Sundays for our in-person worship service at 1 p.m. And you can also stay connected to any of our social media platforms. But whatever way you choose to connect, just know that here at Grace for the Nations Church, we still believe there is hope.